Case study based question number 3. In a park, four poles are standing at positions A, B, C and D around the fountain such that the cloth joining the poles A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A touches the fountain at P, Q, R and S respectively as shown in the figure. Now see here, in the figure you can see here, four fountains are there and four poles are there at the corners. Right? Now here, A, B, C, D, these are the position of the poles and P, Q, R, S, these are the position of the fountains. Okay? And O is the center of the circle. Based on the above information, answer the following questions. If O is the center of the circular fountain, then O, S, A. Then O, S, A. This one. What is this angle? We know that radius is perpendicular to the tangent. So, angle O S A is 90 degree. So, option B is the correct one. Right? Come to the second one. Which of the following is correct? Now, A S equal to A P. A S equal to A P. We know that tangents drawn from exterior point to the circle are equal. So, these two parts are equal. Then, B P equal to B Q. B P equal to B Q. Yes. This is also correct. CQ equal to CR. CQ equal to CR. Yes, this is also correct one. Correct? It means that all these three options are correct. So, option D is the right one. Come to the third question. If DR equal to 7 cm, DR, I will write down, this is 7 cm, this one. And AD is 11. This AD is 11. Find the length of AP. We need to get this AP. As this is 7, this is also 7. Now this whole was 11. 11 minus 7 is 4. So AS and AP are equal. Therefore length of AP is 4 cm. So option A is correct. Fourth question. If O is the center of the fountain, with angle QCR, this angle is 60 degree. What is angle QOR? I need to find out angle QOR, this angle. You know this is 90 degree and this is 90 degree. Why? Radius is perpendicular to the tangent. It means that some of these two angles will come as 180 degree. Right? Because this one is the quadrilateral. See, this one is the quadrilateral. Sum of all the angles of the quadrilateral is 360. This is 90. This is 90. I have removed. That means sum of these two angles which is equal to 180. Already they said this angle is 60 degree. So this angle I need to get. So X which is equal to 180. Right. 60 will go that side. X which is equal to what? 120 degree. So measurement of Angle QOR is 120 degree and option B is correct one. Come to the next question. Which of the following is correct? They said AB plus BC. See, AB plus BC which is equal to CD plus DA. Sum of the adjacent side which is equal to sum of the another two adjacent sides. Okay. Now that is not the right one. Here you try to understand. From A, this one is equal to this one. That means AP which is equal to AS. From point B, this one equal to this. That means BP which is equal to BQ. From point C, see this one and this one, these two are equal. That means CR equal to CQ. CR equal to CQ and from point D this DR which is equal to DS. So I will just write down DR which is equal to DS. Now if you observe here if I will add them all what is the result? AP plus BP. AP plus BP is nothing but AB. Right? AB plus CR and DR if you observe 
CR and DR is nothing but CD. So here I'll write down CD, which is equal to. Now here, BQ and CQ. If you observe here, BQ and CQ is nothing but BC. So this is BC. And this AS and DS is nothing but AD plus AD. Now check which option is the correct one, which is matching with this. This AB plus BC not matching first one. AB plus AD not matching. AB plus CD is there and AD plus BC is there. This one. So option C is the correct one. Right? Case study based question 4. Smita always finds it confusing with the concepts of tangent and secant of a circle. But this time she has determined herself to get the concepts easier. So she started listing down the differences between tangent and secant of a circle along with their relation. Here some points in the question form are listed by Smita in her notes. Try answering them to clear your concepts also. First one. A line that intersects a circle exactly at two points is called. She said, a line that intersects the circle exactly at two points. See, one point and second point and this line is called as the secant. Number of tangents that can be drawn on a circle is. Now here, one point is there, we can draw a tangent. This is another point, we can draw a tangent. Another point we can draw a tangent that means on the circle there are infinite number of points and we will be able to draw infinite number of tangents. So answer D is the correct one. Third one, number of tangents that can be drawn to a circle from a point not on it is. Now imagine this is the point which is not on the circle and from this point how many tangents we are able to draw? Just see, one tangent and then this is the second tangent. That means we are able to draw two tangents. So option B is the correct one. Number of secants that can be drawn to a circle from a point on it is. Now imagine this is the point on the circle here. Now how many tangents we, uh, sorry, how many secants we are able to draw? Just see. Now from this point, one secant this way I will be able to draw. Then the other secant I am able to draw. Then another secant I am able to draw. It means that this way I am able to draw infinitely many secants. Right? To the circle. So option A is the correct one. A line that touches a circle at only one point is called. Now this is the line here which is touching the circle only at a single point. And this line is called as the tangent to the circle. So option C is the correct one. Right? Easy? Case study based question 5. In a maths class, the teacher draws two circles that touch each other externally at point K. See? This is point K and both the circles are touching each other at this point. With centers A and B, center A here for the first circle, B for the second circle and radii 5 cm. Radius of the first circle is 5 cm and radius of the second circle is 4 cm respectively as shown in the figure. Based on the above information, answer the following questions. Okay, now just see here. The value of PA, we need to find out this PA, value of PA. This one is the tangent. PS is the tangent. I will do the construction. This one I will join. Okay. This is the radius. So radius and tangent, they are perpendicular to each other. PS is perpendicular to SA. Right. According to the first theorem, radius is perpendicular to the tangent. So triangle PAS is a right angle triangle. And by Pythagoras theorem, I will just write down PA square, which is equal to 12 square plus 5 square. Why? This one is 5. It is the radius of the circle. So 12 square we know. 144 here. 5 square is 25. It comes as 169. 
and when you will take the square root of both the sides you are getting pa which is equal to 13 cm so option c is the correct one second one the value of bq bq exactly same way i will just join this one now this is the radius bt is the radius and tq is the tangent so radius is perpendicular to the tangent once again this is the right angle triangle and we will use the pythagoras theorem so here bq square which is equal to 4 is the radius huh 4 square plus 3 square and you know this is 16 and 9 which comes as 25 take the square root so we get the answer as 5 cm or very simple 4 3 and next one will be 5 according to the pythagorean triplet so you are getting the answer for bq as 5 cm third one the value of pk this value i need to find out p k i know this pa just now we did it by pythagoras theorem right now that was 13 cm plus ak this ak is the radius which is 5 and which comes as 18 cm so option d is correct value of pk is 18 cm fourth one value of qy this one this value we know bq which is equal to 5 cm right pythagoras uh, by pythagoras theorem we got the value of bq in the previous questions so bq which is equal to by plus yq bq is 5 cm by is the radius this by right this is the radius which is 4 cm 4 cm plus y q this 4 will go that side 5 minus 4 answer comes as 1 cm so the value of y q is 1 cm so option c is the correct one look at this one here now here they have written p s square t q square once again p s square and t q square okay now just see p s square if i write down here imagine this triangle p s a in this triangle i will use the pythagoras theorem huh? now according to pythagoras theorem p s square which is equal to p a square minus a s square right now this p a square i'll keep as it is and a s is the radius so instead of a s i can write down ak ak because ps and ak both are radii i am just replacing i am just writing here p sorry as which is equal to ak these are the radii okay so they are equal so i can replace that now i get it here a square minus b square identity so pa plus ak and here pa minus ak pa plus ak just see pa plus ak this pa plus ak is nothing but pk okay so this value is what pk now pa minus ak pa minus ak is not possible correct so instead of ak i can write down ax ax is also the radius so here once again i can write down ax this is also the radius so instead of that ak i will write down ax so here this i will replace with pk and this one is pa minus ax and if i do the subtraction pk into p x this subtraction p a minus a x c p a minus this p a from p a we are removing this a x so what is left here p x is left so here our answer comes as p s square which is equal to 
pk into px now see which which option is matching with this pa square first option not matching second not third option is matching pa square which is equal to pk into px and this is called as the tangent secant theorem okay so option c is the correct one